there are so many expectations from everywhere and there's so i mean all from parents from our society from schools from themselves and also from social media because they see people from the outside which is not i mean a, um honest a picture of how people feel in inwardly so that too makes a lot of pressure on teenagers today because um, they want to be perfect, have perfect bodies, and they want to look beautiful and they want to do good in every um, matter of their life. So they are very much influenced by social media mm. today. Of course, uh, that's that's a part of uh, the Danish way of raising teens as well. I do think that, um, that Danes have a lot of focus on some basic like core values like free play and trust and uh, authenticity and that um that that we are very good at yeah okay fine and i mean and statistically there's evidence here are danish teens really the statistically the sort of the healthiest and, and happiest and best adjusted teenagers in the world well, I do think that Danish teenagers are very much um, alike uh, other uh, teenagers in the world. They go through the same uh, hormone changes and the brain is being rebuilt, etc. Um, so, and I do think that they do uh, drink as well as uh, many teenagers do, but it's about how we approach them as parents that's different. Okay, so and what are the what are the basics there of, then of, of of the Danish way of parenting as distinct from like other nations? Well, I, one thing that I think is important at first is that I I believe that in general, general terms in the media among adults and in our culture, the terminal, terminology around teenagers has a very negative and judgmental character, and I do think that that is the first thing that we really have to to focus on you on mean, changing you mean there's a tendency in some places to kind of sort of demonize teenagers and and, and just yeah. regard them straight like straight away as a problem act yeah precisely we have we often label them very negatively and that doesn't make any good for them at all and we also uh, all, very often have like a challenging relationship with our teens uh, and we are many parents are convinced that the bad behavior is the team doing something against us personally. And that's not the case either. So one of the things, one of the main pillars that I think the Danes are very, um, very good at is trust. Because Danes, Danes society is a place of trust. And uh, it is a concept that we value highly. And it is the building block for a happier and more worry-free life with teenagers. Because... Trust helps create well-being and security and credible relationships between teens and parents and makes family life uh, function uh, more easily. So is that is that like trust as opposed to discipline? Trust being like the uh, as opposed to sort of authoritarian discipline or do, or do both perhaps go together? Yeah, I think that if you can count on your teen, it is easier to let them have the freedom they want. And if there's trust, uh, your teen will respect the, the agreements you make jointly, uh, which is vital for the family dynamics uh, as it provides uh, security and a more robust, robust, mm, or robust, yeah. robust yeah. Uh, family structure. And I mean, having such a foundation to stand on uh, and a more, yeah, is crucial uh, for times containing problems and challenges that you know we yeah. trust each other so in my opinion i see the trust as kind of the glue between parents and teens that makes yeah okay well, yeah let, let's 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 try sort of an example scenario here then so if, if i mean my, i should say i have a teenage daughter and she's a delight so this is not about her if i had a teen who would say i don't know I discovered someone told me I saw your child getting drunk in the park with her friends. Now, the British approach there might be to, I don't know, to to, to shout at them, to ground them, to forbid them for seeing the friends because they're a bad example, or perhaps alternatively, just sort of wave your arms up in the, in the sky and, and, and give up. What would the Danish approach be? It would be that uh, we want to understand what went before, uh, how come that uh, our team didn't tell us there's a lack of trust then um, because we believe very much in open dialogue and uh, a good conversation where we share life with each other. 
So, so if I got that message from another parent and I heard that about my uh, teen girl, I would uh, ask her, "Hey, tell me what were what was what were you doing at first? Uh, I want to hear um, who invited you, how how come you came to to be drinking beers in the park." Um, I, I want to understand, so I start with uh, um, open questions to uh, to better understand the whole situation. And then I will definitely start um, a conversation about um, how to behave and how uh, how the values we have in our family is communication and how come that she didn't uh, came to me and talked about what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it's it's not something that just that you, you can just from one day to another apply. This is the building uh, blocks that you yeah. have been been cult cultivating for many years that is being um, tested and uh, right now in the teenage years. Okay, but so, so the other way around then, your child comes to you and says, tomorrow I'm going to go and get drunk with other teenagers in the park. You know, that's, that's, that's coming to you with the information before and that's discussing, that's raising it as a topic of discussion. Is it possible within this framework to 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 sort of to lay down the law to say no you can't yeah i mean if if you if you have a close relationship with your team then you will also have followed uh, the um the develop the development of them um so you will know that this is something that is starting to come mm -hmm. so you will already have had the talks about uh what to drink if and when to drink and uh, how to do it in a secure environment and uh, how much is okay and how much isn't okay. So mm -hmm. hopefully all these conversations have come before that she tells me that she's going to be drunk uh, tomorrow. But if she's, mm -hmm. if she's explaining that to me and she's saying, hey, this is a, um, a party in the park that everyone is coming and uh, I'm going to bring two beers, I will say, okay, that's fine. And mm -hmm. uh, we will talk about uh, how to not um, how to be careful about uh, not getting anything uh, else, and how to follow with other people, a good friend or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, sure. I understand. It is about the communication. You said before that these aren't just principles you can suddenly sort of switch to from one day to the next. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, of course you can. I mean, parenting is a conscious uh, decision of how you want to be as a parent and, and how the relationship towards your teenager or your child uh, is uh, growing positively. So um, you can take a conscious choice today and say, I want to change something. But most often we have to look at ourselves as well instead of just pointing fingers at our teenagers, because it's so easy to blame them for how we feel and for their faults, instead of looking at, well, did we actually communicate our values and the norms and the rules we have in our family in a good and positive way? And have uh, I reassured myself and my team that, that they have actually understood what I'm trying to deliver to them? Mm. And look, is it... um. Should everything be discussed or is it healthy for, even in the Danish way, for teenagers to have some secrets from, from, from their parents? Absolutely. And hopefully, I hope they will have. I mean, we are not their friends. We are the parents. And it's very important that we don't think that we should be, I mean, young again with mm. them. But we do have some experiences that we should be aware of that we don't put on them. Uh, because we know all the dangers that's uh, lowering around the corner and everything, they have to they have to go out and test uh, adolescents and youth themselves. Uh, but we have um, the um, it's us who has uh, uh, the um, how do you say the responsibility yeah. to, to deliver all the information and making them feel as much as possible secure in this uncertain. Uh, time of their life and is is um is social media transforming teenage life because it's social media that makes me think that my teenager's life is in many respects unrecognizable from my own life when i was a teenager do the sort of the principles you're talking about cover this new world 
It does. It does in a way where uh, there are so many expectations from everywhere. And there's so, I mean, all from parents, from our society, from schools, from themselves, and also from social media, because they see people from the outside, which is not, uh, I mean, a uh, um, honest uh, picture of how people feel in, inwardly. So that too makes a lot of pressure on teenagers today because um, they want to be perfect, have perfect bodies, and they want to look beautiful and they want to do good in every um, matter of their life. So they are very much influenced by social media mm -hmm. today. Of course, uh, that's that's a part of uh, the Danish way of raising teens as well. So look, just to nail this down before I let you go, the, the I mean, the key here it's it's communication. It's communication with your child. It's, it's them being able to talk to you and you being able to talk to them, right? Yeah, right. It's about not giving up on them, even though they're teenagers. It's continuing to developing uh, and fostering a good and healthy and close relationship with them. And of course, the communications uh, includes that. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you very much indeed. That's, that's that's completely fascinating. Thank you very much. The Danish Way of Raising Teens by Eben Dissing-Sandal is out on January the 26th. And Eben, thanks very much indeed for coming to talk to us.